Hey guys, welcome back to Predictor Restoration Tips. In this installment, we're going to be talking about the thermistor, the dial light, and the filament dropper. And I know some of you just want the answer, so here you go. Replace this with an Amitherm SL1222201. Replace the pilot light with a Type 44 bulb, and replace the three section filament dropper with an 18 ohm 10 watt, a 12 ohm 10 watt, and an 8.2 ohm 5 watt. There you go. Now, for those of you who'd like to know what these do, why they're there, and why I chose the values that I chose, stick around. Alright, now I'm talking about the series strung sets, where all the tube filaments are wired together in series, there's no power transformer. The parts I'm talking about are part of that filament string, and this is found in the 9L37 chassis used in the Holiday and Pedestal models, and the 9L38 used in the Tandem model. Now I've already replaced those parts in this particular set. The thermistor would be found here, and very often they uh, fall out like this one has. There used to be a lead attached to either side. Over time, those joins, joints tend to fail and they fall out. You may find this disc rattling around inside the bottom of the cabinet, and you see a couple wires sticking out over here. That's what fell out. This guy would normally be found over here, and they're often corroded and the coating is flaking off. This is a power resistor with several taps. So we have continuity from one end to the far end and then two taps along the way. Inside of this is a uh, rectangular slab of material with a bunch of wire wound around it that has specific resistance to it. And the pilot light, at least on this model, it has a tuner, or no, sorry, this is from a pedestal. It's found uh, right here. On some uh, models, it's a little bit different depending on uh, uh, how it's oriented. But in the uh, pedestal, it uh, kind of snaps in near the tuner. It's there to illuminate the back of the fine tuning and channel selector knob. All of those work together with the tube filaments. It gets a little confusing, uh, especially because of the way Philco drew their schematic. And Sam's isn't a whole lot better. So all the parts I just talked about and the tube filaments are down in this mess along with the power supply. Boy, it's a bad layout, but <laughs> see if I can walk you through it a little bit. This is your plug that goes into the wall outlet. And we have hot and neutral. These are not polarized, so hot or neutral could be at either side, but let's just assume we have neutral going to the bottom, which goes right to the chassis. Thus, this is a hot chassis set. And then the hot would go to your power switch. The other side of that branches off in two directions. The right side, we'll talk about in a separate video, fusible resistor and power supply. The left side powers all your tube filaments. So often you'll see me power these up with the fusible resistor taken out. That means there's no power going to the right side. It's only going to the left side, which is just the tube filaments, and that is it. It's a good way to check that your basic wiring is sound before you try to power up the whole set. All right, what do we have right to the left of that? This thing that says 400 ohms cold, 11 ohms hot, thermistor, resistor symbol with a line through it. That is a special type of resistor whose resistance changes with temperature. What they mean by cold is basically room temperature. At around room temperature, the set's been off for a long time. All the tubes have cooled down. If you took an ohm meter, you would measure about 500, sorry, 400 ohms. When the set is fully operational, all the tubes are lit up, everything's nice and warm, and the set is playing, if you were to measure that resistance, it would be around 11 ohms. I'll tell you what that's for in a bit. To the left of that, we have this thing that says 6.3-250MAPL1. Squiggle with a circle around it. 
that is that light bulb behind the channel selector. That means 6.3 volts, 250 milliamps. So those are specs for that light bulb. That is a type 44 light bulb. I often find type 47s in these, and it's not correct. It should be a type 44. Why does it matter? Because it's in parallel with the resistor, and the sum of these currents goes to the tube filaments. The circuit is somewhat self-balancing, so it's not the end of the world if you had a 47 in there, but they designed it to have a 44. That's what you should put in there. In parallel with that bulb is the resistor. It's really hard to see. It's a WR3 with three arrows. That's that three-section resistor. 17 ohms in parallel with that light bulb. 13 ohms with the, the tap going off to this tuner power plug and then an 8 ohm below that and then going off and then kind of curls and snakes around. These are all the tube filaments and there's a bunch of extra crud they threw in here. This squiggly thing, it's a filter choke and then occasionally they have 15 or 1000 ohm or 470, uh, sorry, pico picofarad. They have a 1500 picofarad, 1000 picofarad, 470 picofarad cap going to ground. That's just to get noise. The choke and those caps are to keep noise from coupling between stages, keep it off of the tube filaments. They want to keep the power clean going through. You don't want to couple noise from stage to stage. And then eventually that goes all the way around, there's our CRT filament, and it comes back around and around and around, and eventually finds its way back to the chassis ground. So, again, it's a horrible way to do it. I will draw you a super simplified version of that. Now I'll try to do this in real time here. All right, we have our AC power coming in. We have our power switch we have our thermistor, we have our filament dropper, and we have all of our tubes, and I'm just going to represent them by one big resistor, and then there's the other side of our AC plug. That's it. Current goes around, and it's AC, so it actually cycles, sloshes back and forth, but that's it. And this was designed for one, one, seven volts. Okay. Thermistor, why is that there? Why can't we just have a fixed resistor like we have with this? Why do we want it to change resistance with temperature? Because the tube filament resistors, sorry, the tube filaments change resistance with temperature as well, but in the opposite direction. When tube filaments are cold, they have a low resistance. If you didn't have this, and you just... Uh, hook this up and turn the set on, you're going to have a huge rush of current. This is going to be one-tenth the resistance it would normally be when the tubes are hot, let's say, um, which could prematurely burn out the filaments. So this is there to cushion the blow. They call it an inrush current limiter. There's another name for these. It's there to cushion the blow when you turn the sets on. It will take longer for the tubes to heat up, because as this gradually gets warmer, its resistance will lower, which will let more current through the gate, and these will warm up. But the trade-off is you will extend the life of your tubes. Okay, why do we have this fixed resistor, this big giant thing that gets really hot and smells and disintegrates over time? Why can't we dispense with that? Because if you add up the voltage on all these tubes, some are 12 volt tubes, some are 6 volt tubes, some are 3 volt tubes, it doesn't add up to 117. It adds up to, I forget, 80 some volts, something like that. Yes, yeah, some tubes come in different voltages, like there's a 3AU6, there's a 6AU6, there's a 12AU6. There is not a combination of tubes. They didn't make these all the, all the tubes this set needs and enough voltages, the right kinds of voltages, such as if you added them all together, you get 117. They just couldn't make it work. So they made, they threw this in there to make up the difference. So we, if we take the voltage drop across this, and the voltage drop across this, and the voltage drop across all the tubes, when the side is hot, it should be 117. And the current should be 600 milliamps. 
Now why do they throw a light bulb across one of the resistors? Well, they could have chosen a light bulb that takes 600 milliamps of current going through it and put it in series with the tubes. However, light bulbs tend to have a much shorter life than a vacuum tube. And if that light was to go out, your set would, start, would stop working. Now, why would they throw a light bulb across one of the resistors? Well, they need a light to illuminate the dial. It's a nice effect. However, it's impractical to get a light bulb that small that runs on 117 volts. There's no power transformer in this. They could put a gigantic resistor in series with a very commonly available 6 volt bulb, but that would be a huge waste of power. So why not throw it into the filament string, get a 600 milliamp light bulb and put it in series with all the tubes, right? Except light bulbs tend to have a shorter life than tubes. And you'd be really PO'd if just because your, this light bulb burned out, your TV wouldn't turn on. So they put it in parallel with one of the resistors. The idea being we can use a really dirt cheap, commonly available bulb that takes 250 milliamps. And if it burns out, the set will still keep working. This, this is somewhat self-regulating. This is a little bit less current going through it. The tubes will cool off, and they'll have a lower resistance, which tends to let more current go through, and they start heating up again. But then the resistance in them goes up, which chokes off the current. So it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a balance. It finds an equilibrium, is what I'm trying to say. So if that light bulb burns out, the set will keep working. Um, but it won't create a real disturbance in the amount of current flowing through the tubes kind of a clever way to do it, I think. Okay, how did I select the parts that I used? Well, I used math. I used Ohm's Law. Well, let's do the thermistor first, because that one is very dependent on what you can buy these days. A lot of guys throw in a CL90. What's a CL90? It's a type of thermistor that has been around a long time and many guys have used them in many 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 radio projects and they look like that could we use one to replace this here's one with the lead still on it yeah we could it's not quite as those are the same specs though a CL90 is 120 ohms cold that's uh, almost uh, only a quarter of what we want. We want 400, not 120. What would that mean? It means when you turn it on, it would let a lot more current through than the original did. The other issue is, this is rated for 2 amps. Well, that's a very confusing parameter for these devices. Is They have a resistance rating, and they have a current rating. Now I know from looking at these tube specs and looking at the schematic, and they even have it labeled in several sp places, this is 600 milliamps. There's 0.6 amps going through this. So thermistors, you can get a 2 amp, you can get a 5 amp, you can get a 10 amp, a 20 amp, you can get a half amp. What the heck would you choose? Because we don't know what the specs are on this other than what's on that schematic. They don't make these anymore, you can't get them. It was maybe a Philco custom part, I don't know. Well, if you look at the data sheet on thermistors, they're meant to run hot. And they're meant to run near their current uh, rating. So for this guy, it's 120 cold. It's around 3 ohms if you have 2 amps running through it. If you have 1 amp, it's around 10 ohms, 12 ohms, something like that. If it's less than an amp, they have a formula. Um, and it, the, the, the resistance increases considerably with less current going through it. So with only 0.6 amps, this might be something around 15 ohms. And it's supposed to be, uh, what did I say, 11 ohms. So it's not terribly off. The bigger issue with this isn't so much the hot resistance as it is the cold resistance is kind of low. But also it would be better to get 
something that's closer to 0.6 amps, like a 1 amp. So the problem with using a 2 amp or a 5 amp or a 10 amp is it's not going to reach its optimal temperature, which means it could be subject to fluctuations. A breeze goes by, cools it off a little bit, because it's, it's not going to get that hot, and its resistance will vary. Will that make a dramatic effect on the set? Probably not, but it's say an oscillating fan and it would blow air by periodically. You might see the pitcher bloom a little bit, uh, or get a little get a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Probably not, but hey, if since we have a bunch of these we can choose from that are readily readily available from DigiKey or Mauser, why don't we choose one that's as close as possible to the original? So I chose the uh, Amitherm SL, uh, what is it, 122201, I think, <laughs> this guy. The SL12 is just the series, I think, and it might be the diameter, I think this might be 12 millimeters in diameter. The 221 means it's 220 ohms cold, and the 01 is for 1 amp. You can get these in different sizes. You can get them smaller. Uh, the, and you can get them even smaller than this. The trade oh, here, check this out. <laughs> you can get them that small. The the trade off is the smaller these are, the quicker they heat up. Uh, I think you're better off going with the larger largest ones you can get that are you know, to, to get close to what these originals are. So these are 220, that's the, really the largest thermistor resistance you're going to find. So two of these in series will give you 440, which is pretty darn close to this, and if you consider the, the thermal bulk of this, two of these, it's close to that. So I use two of these in series, and they're rated for 1 amp is their uh, operating current. 0.6 amps is close to 1 amp, you can't get these in 0.6 amps. Half an amp would be, be exceeding that a little bit. You can't go too high with these or you burn them out. Um, so, that's what, I, that's what I chose. They're cheap. Uh, less than a buck a piece, I think. So, makes sense to use them. For sure, DigiKey and Mauser carry these. Probably other places, too. Um, but that's what I use. I just uh, take two of them, twist the leads together, and it looks like that. Don't bother with heat shrink tubing or any spaghetti tubing. This is how the original was mounted to, which is bare wires. There's nothing else in this area, so I'm not concerned about that shorting into anything. All right, moving on to the filament dropper. They don't make these anymore. And the closest thing you might possibly come up with is one of these big old vitreous enamel guys. And get the adjustable variety. I don't have one handy, but it looks like this, but a suction of the enamel is gone, exposing the wires inside. And you can get a metal clamp that screws down. You can loosen it up. You can slide it around to adjust it. You could put two of them on here. So theoretically, you could get one of these guys that's the adjustable variety and put two taps on it. These are really expensive. Uh, if you add up the original, it's 17, 13 is 20, or sorry, 30, uh, 38 ohms total. 39 is a standard value, and that's pretty close. Maybe you could find like a 50 watt, 39 ohm adjustable power resistor. Uh, good luck. Good luck. I think it's far more practical to use three discrete power resistors to simulate, emulate this guy. So that's what I did. 17 and 13 are not standardly available values, neither is 8. So the closest is 18, 12, and 8.2, which adds up to uh, 38.2, which is basically the same. Wattage, Ohm's Law. We know there's 0.6 amps running through this. Power is current squared. So 8.2 ohms with... 0.6 amps is basically 3 watts. I used a 5 watt. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 0.6 times 0.6 times 12 is 4.3. I went with a 10. 
Uh, and similarly for the 18. But the 18 is different because when it says working and you have a good light bulb, a bunch of the power goes to the light bulb. But yes, they can burn out, so let's make sure we have at least some safety margin. So it's about 6.5 watts if the bulb burns out. I went with a 10 watt again for that. Once you get above 10 watts, it gets a little hard to find discrete resistors. You have to start going to the vitreous enamel type. Uh, and as I say, they, they, get, they get pricey for something like this. This is a 20 watt. Uh, as far as wiring them up, um, the 8.2, you can just go between these two lugs. No, no big deal. Uh, the other two, uh, typically power resistors, 10 watt variety they well they look like the ones i have in there they a cylinder with two long leads if you put one around a lug the this other remaining lead is not long enough to wrap around they're also not long enough that you could get between the lugs like this so i just put them both out in that direction hook them together and add a bit of bus wire the leads on these if you get the expensive resistors like the vitreous enamel or silicone coated these are really heavy gauge wire. It's like 18 gauge. If you get the cheapo ceramic ones, or cement ones, hang on, I'll show you what they look like. These guys cost considerably less, widely available leads, dinky. They can, can't really support their own weight. Uh, so, <laughs> that's why I don't use these. But yeah, they are cheaper. That's originally why I bought these. Well, I have an 8.2. I could have used this this guy for this guy. But when I saw these leads, I was thinking, eh, maybe not. Maybe not. I'll leave that up to you. These are three, four bucks a pop. The uh, cement variety are probably less than a buck a piece. But there you go, and that's where they mount, and notice there's nothing above, above here. So the hot stuff, the hottest stuff in this set, they have right here where there's open air, and it can, the heat just radiates upwards. There's no parts above it to get roasted. And that leaves the light bulb. Here's a GE44 vintage bulb. Looks just like a 47. If you look on the base, the number should be printed on there somewhere. These are still made today, very readily available. You cannot use an LED version, because you need current flowing through this. LEDs would have a different current characteristics. You have to use an incandescent bulb. Use a number 44. So that's it. Amy Therm SL1222101. Use two of them in series, and go with the vendor of your choice for these power resistors. And hook them up just like the taps are on the far left, 18 ohm, then your 12 ohm, then your 8.2 light bulb simply goes into the socket. Let's see what's in this set, I haven't looked yet. Hey, they have a 44, that might be the first 44 I've actually found, but I bet it's bad. That's how discolored it is. Even if this is measured good, I'd still want to replace it because over time the filament uh, I don't know, it's, it must start burning up or something and dark into the bulb. Put a fresh one in there and get a brighter illumination. All right, that is all I got for you in this segment. I hope you found these tips helpful. Be looking for you in the next one when we will talk about the fusible resistor, aka fusistor. Bye.